We're now going to move on in this series and we're going to learn how to apply filtering, searching and ordering to the response data that's coming back from our API. So if we look at our product list response page, what we've got here is a list of products that are coming back as the response to the request to this endpoint. Let's imagine we wanted to perform some filtering here. We don't want to get all of the products coming back in a single JSON response or even as a paginated set of JSON responses. We want to perform some kind of filtering or searching of the products. So we're going to look at how to do that in this video. And this is a very common task in APIs. You want to give your clients a way to filter what they're actually getting back so that they don't need to get back data that they don't need. Or rather, a better way to put that is that you don't want your clients getting back data that they don't need and that they then have to manually process and filter out. That's also going to affect the performance of your APIs because you're going to be sending data over the wire that your client might not need. So if you give your client a way to filter that, it's going to have a good impact on the performance of your API and also it might reduce the times, for example, that it's taking to query your database because you need to return less data, you have some filtering parameters and if you design things correctly, that can actually improve performance. So let's look at that in this video. And one example here is that we might only want to get back products whose price is greater than or less than a given number. For example, a price below $20. If you have an e-commerce site, it's very common for people to set a maximum filter on the price and they might not want to buy items over, let's say, $50 for a given query. So what you can do here is add filters to the API response. And then Django REST Framework has some utilities for actually taking those filters, taking query parameters and things like that. And performing that filtering. So let's get started by looking at that just now. I'm going to go to the documentation. Now, as it says here on the filtering page, which I'll leave a link to below the video, the root query set provided by the manager describes all objects in the database table, but usually you only need to select a subset of that complete set of objects. So the default behavior of the generic list views in Django REST framework is to return the entire query set for a model manager but often you do want to restrict this. Now, the simplest way to do that is to filter the query set using the get query set method. You can override that as we saw earlier in the series. And what we did earlier in the series is basically what you see here, filtering against the current user. Now you can get the authenticated user with request.user. And then if you override get query set, you can then use that user here and use a filter on the base query set in order to get a filtered set of data. So we've already seen how to do this kind of filtering where you actually take some dynamic data in the get query set method and you use that to filter down the data. But we want to look at generic filtering now. So I'm going to click this section of the sidebar. So REST framework includes support for generic filtering backends that allow you to easily construct complex searches and filters. And these filters are also going to present themselves as HTML controls in the REST framework browsable API and also in the Django admin API. So if we scroll down here, what we're going to see is the ability to set a filter backend using the REST framework setting that we've already seen in this series. Now REST framework has a setting called default filter backends, and that's a list of the different filter backends you want to apply to your API. Now if you set this, it's going to be a global setting. You can also set the filter backends on a pair view or a pair view set basis. And what you can do in order to do that is you can take the classes that we've seen so far in this series. For example, this one is subclassing list API view, and then you can set a filter backends property on that class. And one of the filter backends is this one here from the Django filters package. We're going to look at that in this video. And this one is the Django filter backend. Now we've done previous videos on this channel on the Django filter package. It's a very useful package. It doesn't only work with APIs. It also works with submitting forms and filtering the data that you can see on a page. So very useful package. And there should be a video appearing on the screen now about that package that we did in the past. What we're going to do in this video is apply the Django filters package to our API. And we're going to go to the documentation. So if we look at the left hand sidebar and we go to the Django filter backend, this has some instructions for installing and setting this up. So what we can do to start with is install Django filter. So let's copy the pip install command. And we're going to go back to our VS code terminal at the bottom here and we're going to paste that in. That's going to install Django filter into the virtual environment. Now, once that's installed, if we go back here, what we can do is add Django filters to the installed apps. So I'm going to load up settings.py and let's scroll down to installed apps. And at the bottom here, we can add Django filters. Now, if you look at installed apps at the moment, we're really mixing in third party packages with the applications that we've already got in our own project. It may be better to split this out if you have a lot of packages appearing in installed apps. I'm just going to copy, or rather I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. 
Now, if we go back to the documentation here, what we can do is we can add the filter backends to our settings, or we can do this on a pair view basis by setting that filter backends property. What I'm going to do is just add this to the global settings for REST framework. So let's copy this line of code. And at the bottom of settings.py, if we scroll up a little bit here, actually, we have the REST framework settings. We've already set the default authentication classes to use JWT authentication and session authentication. And in the last video, I think it was, we set the default schema class to the schema from DRF Spectacular. I'm now going to paste in the filter backend setting, and we're setting the default filter backend for all views in the application to the Django filter backend. So let's save settings.py. And this setting now is going to tell REST framework that by default, any filtering should use this backend here for all views and all requests coming into our API. So let's say if we only want equality based filtering, in other words, we want to take the value of one of the fields in our API here, and we want to check if it's equal to a particular value, then what we can do is add a field called filter set fields to our views. So on the product list create view, what I'm going to do here is add a filter set fields option here. Let me spell that correctly. Filter set underscore fields. And we can set that to a tuple here of all of the fields that we want to provide an equality based filter for. So I want to do that for the name field of the product object, as well as name, let's do it for the price field as well, just for now. Now with that simple change, what we can actually do is start the Django server here and go back to uh, the browsable API where we're looking at this response. So we have the API URL at the top here. If we add a URL parameter of name, we can check for products that have a name that's equal to television. So if I now use this and we actually submit that, I think in the previous video we added a lot of different televisions here. So we now only get back products that have a name equal to television. So that URL parameter at the top is being used to filter the data that we get back just by using that Django filter backend globally as a setting within our application. As you can see here, it's the filter backend setting for REST framework. So we're now able to perform filtering because we've added the name to the filter set fields and we could do the same for the price. So let's go back to the API here. And if we look here, we have a television that has a price of 300. In fact, they all do. I think it's maybe better to go back to this page here. So we have this album that has a price of 15.99. I'm gonna copy that here. And if we go back to the URL, we can add a price URL parameter and set it to 15.99. And as you can see here, we only get back that one product with that price. Now, as I said, this is gonna only work with equality based filtering by default. So if you wanted to check for items that are greater than this price rather than equal to, this is not gonna work in that case. Now, another problem that we have here, if we go back to the list page here, if we search for digital camera, what I'm gonna do is copy this. And again, we're gonna search over the name field. So name, and let's set it equal to digital camera. If I lowercase these, and we don't have these uppercase characters, if we search for that, we get back no results. This is only going to work because it's case sensitive at the moment. It's got to be exactly equal in order to return the response. So what we want here is probably more flexible filters. We don't want to have to get things exactly right because we might want to check for items that have a price that's greater than a value or less than. And we certainly might want to check for items that have a name that's not exactly equal to the string that's passed from our client or from the URL. We might want to do some case insensitive filtering as one example. Now what you do in Django filter is you can define a filter set class. So let's go back to our application and I'm going to go back to the API app and we're going to add a new file here and let's call that file filters.py. Now if we go back to the documentation here, we can define what's called a filter set class. So what I'm actually going to do here is go to the Django filter documentation itself. So this is a package here and we can go to the documentation. And on the getting started page, we can get an overview of how to do this. So we define what's called a filter set class. And usefully, this is also for products in the documentation. So I'm going to paste this code in here. We're defining a product filter and that inherits or extends rather the Django filters filter set class. And we can create a meta class within this. So let's create that meta class and link it to a model. And that's going to be the product model. And we need to import that at the top here from api.models. And then we can define the fields that we want to actually filter on in this meta class. And again, I'm just going to use name and price for now. So the same fields as we used before. And we can then import the product filter into views.py. So at the top here, I'm going to import that from api.filters. So we've imported product filter and we can then set that in this class here. So rather than filter set fields, I'm going to remove that and we can use filter set underscore class instead. 
and we're going to set that to our product filter. So let's paste that in here. So that's the filter set class that we just created here. And that was created by extending the filter set class above. So hopefully this should still work with the equality based searching. So let's go back here. And if we search for the digital camera, we still get back the same response. So that's still working. But in order to do filtering that's a bit more advanced, for example, for greater than or less than filtering over the price column, or you could do greater than a certain date if you have a date column, what you need to do is actually add a bit more data, a bit more information to the product filter class that we have here. Now, in order to show how to do this, what we can do is go to some documentation for Django filter. So I'm going to load up a page here and I'll leave a link to this below the video. So as we've seen here, the fields option is combined with the model to automatically generate these filters. And that fields option that accepts two different syntaxes. So what we've done at the moment is just provide a list of field names. And you can see that here for the user filter. It just filters on the username and the last login fields for this user. But the other way you can do this is you can have a dictionary of field names that are mapped to a list of the lookups you want to support for that field name. So here's an example down below in the second user filter. We have a username field, but instead of just the exact filter, which is the default, this also has a contains option as well. And that's a filter type that you can use. So rather than just looking for an exact match, you can check whether a substring is part of a larger string using the contains filter. We also have the last login. And again, the exact filter is used here. But other than that, we can add new ones. And because this is a date time field, we can extract the year and find any items that have a year greater than a particular value by using this one here. So I hope that makes sense. What we're going to do is go back here and we're going to change this up a little bit. So we're going to split the fields into different lines and we can close that off. And actually we need to change the tuple here. It's not a tuple anymore. We're going to define a dictionary that contains keys and values. And remember the keys are the field names and the value is a list of the lookups you want to support for that field. So we want the exact lookup as before. And we also want the contains lookup. Now for the price, we want to support greater than, less than and equal to. And we also want to support the range lookup. So again, we want exact here, but we also want LT, which stands for less than as well as greater than, which is GT. And finally, I want to add the range lookup. So let's see the effect of this just now. If we go back to our API here and let's go back to the list page at the moment. Um, let's go back here. Now we've got an item here with a price of 350 and another one with a price of 17.99. So I'm going to add a price lookup here. So price, we've already seen the equality, so we don't need to test that again. But what we can do is add price greater than, and let's say 100 here. And we're only going to get back items whose price is greater than 100. And you can see that that has worked here. And again, we've got the repetition of the televisions. And obviously you wouldn't have that in a real application probably. Now, if we change greater than to less than here, and I think I've messed that up, should be less than, what we get back in the response are only items that have a price that are less than 100. So that's how you use greater than and less than. And we also defined a range lookup as well. So what you can set that to is a comma separated lower and maximum boundary. So for example, between 100 and let's say 350 here, if we submit that, we only get back these ubiquitous televisions that are in this application. They have a price of 300. And if we set the range to something different, let's say between 20 and 50, uh, we're not getting back anything for that one. So let's change that to 120. And let's try it one more time. Rather than 20, I'm going to set that to 10. And we get back these items here. So that's how the range lookup works. So for these numerical fields, such as price, you can perform less than, less than and equal to as well, greater than and range as well as exact matches. Now, this name field here is something we're going to look at now. We've improved it a little bit with this contains lookup. So let's see that just now. If we go back to our API, and I'm just going to go back to the entire list page at the moment. If we looked for a name that contained, let's say, a substring of this, Lev, I'm going to go back to the URL here and let's look for a name. Now, we've already seen the equality and it has to be case sensitive. What we're going to do now is use the contains lookup. So name and then two underscores and contains. If we set that to Lev, then we can get back these televisions one more time. So that's now working with the substring using the contains lookup. Now I want to show the digital camera query one more time. So we had this digital camera query where it was returning no results because the case was incorrect. So in order to fix that, what we can do is go back to VS Code and we can change the exact lookup to I exact. And we can also change the contains lookup to I contains. And actually you might notice here that I contains actually 
is all we need because an exact lookup is also going to be a contains lookup as well. But I'll just keep it like that for now. So what we can do is go back to the API after making that change. And if I refresh this page, you can see we now get back all of the items and that's because I've made a mistake here. We need to actually use an iExact lookup. So iExact and we set that to digital camera and it now works. Now there's a lot more customization that you can do using Django filter along with Django REST framework. We've scratched the surface here and you can see now that we've taken the price and the name fields that we have on the product model and we can now filter the API response data not only by an equality search, but also by looking at contains for strings and also less than, greater than and range lookups for a numeric field. So that's going to be all for this video. In the next video, we're going to move on and we're going to look at how we can search for data in the API. And we're going to see how Django REST framework provides some utilities for searching and filtering down our API responses based on a search query parameter. And that's quite similar to what we've looked at here, but there are some other built in ways to do this. So that's coming up in the next video. Thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel, check out the coffee page that we've got in the description of the video. Thanks very much to everyone that's contributed to that so far. It's much appreciated and we'll see you in the next video.